So do ABG questions intimidate you? A lot of students are intimidated by these type of questions. This is regarding acid-base balance, CO2, pH levels, right? HCO3 or bicarbonate. I promise you it's not that bad. I'm going to show you a trick and it's called the Rome method. So now before I could just jump in and start telling you everything about respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis, I need to talk about pH. Now your pH has to be a certain range. Take a look at this little chart. pH fluctuates. And for your body to maintain homeostasis, you need to be in what is called neutral. Neutral is a pH value of 7.35 to 7.45. If you go lower than 7.35, this is considered acidic. Your blood becomes acidic. If it goes greater than 7.45, you are base. The other word for base is alkalotic. Now take a look at this chart here and look at some of these things that are extremely acidic. For example, battery fluid, right? And on the opposite side, something that's has is alkalotic all the way on the opposite side is drain cleaner the farthest away on both sides of this spectrum will cause the most harm to humans okay remember we need to be neutral 7.35 to 7.45 before i get directly into the row method though let me talk about what the difference between respiratory and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis is so right off the rip, we're talking about respiratory acidosis. And the one word that I want you to always memorize with respiratory acidosis is hypoventilation. Hypoventilation just means ineffective breathing, right? And when somebody ineffectively breathes, their CO2 keeps stacking, keeps going higher and higher and higher. And once that patient has too much CO2 in their bloodstream, mixed with water, turns into carbonic acid, and when there's too much carbonic acid inside the bloodstream, then your kidneys start to create or excrete bicarbonate. Okay, so with looking at this example here, it says chronic obstructive pulmonary disease creates acidosis, which is an interesting thing to say, because we look at a patient with COPD and you might say, well, are they really hypoventilating? Because with COPD exacerbation, they're breathing faster. Please don't always think rate and hypoventilation correlate. Not always the case, right? This patient might be breathing fast, but it's inadequate breathing. It's very shallow respirations. Let's go ahead and take a look at this little graph here. Let me get myself out the way. It shows there on the left-hand side as carbonic acid increases inside the bloodstream that there's an increase in sodium bicarb. And as sodium bicarb increases, it levels out your pH. Pretty simple. I like that little graphic there. Makes it make sense. Uh, talking about respiratory alkalosis. So if respiratory acidosis was ineffective breathing, is respiratory alkalosis too much breathing? Yes, it is. Okay, it says associated with conditions that result in hyperventilation. Think of your anxiety patients, somebody who's breathing out so much CO2 and they're just getting rid of it all. Okay, these persons, their CO2 is going to be very low. And when someone's CO2 is low, their kidneys actually retain hydrogen ions. And by doing so, starts to level out that pH. And the person's respiratory rate starts to decrease. It does take a little bit of time for this to happen. And unfortunately, for a lot of patients that are hyperventilating because of anxiety, they kind of pass out when this starts to happen. And then there is a fluctuation or a change in that pH level. Now, a lot of you feel very comfortable with respiratory, but you might be saying, what on earth is metabolic acidosis? So one thing I want you to remember is metabolic acidosis just means it's the patient is acidotic. So it means their pH is less than 7.35, but it's not respiratory related. Okay, so that's the one thing. Take a look at what it says here. Lactic acidosis could be from trauma, right? Ketoacidosis, maybe diabetes, 
gastrointestinal loss, ingestion of drugs or toxins can cause this. So it's other reasons why that person's pH is low. Now talking about metabolic alkalosis, this is when somebody loses too much acid within their system. So it could be from somebody who vomits a lot, or maybe somebody who drinks too much water, right? So a couple other ones here shows nasogastric suctioning, uh, or an excessive intake in an alkaline substance that might be used for cleaning, like a cleaning product. So now that we covered that and discussed the differences, let's talk about Rome. Now, before I jump right into Rome, let's go ahead and take a look at these values because you need to write them down. I recommend you have these for your data dump if you're sitting for the National Registry. And by the way, I bet you that you're gonna have at least two questions on ABGs in your National Registry exam. So let's take a look. pH, it says 735 to 745. The PACO2, 35 to 45. And HCO3, 22 to 26. If you don't have those written down or memorized, please do so. So showing you this little graph here, saying that respiratory opposite, metabolic equal, might not make the most sense. But what I want you to do is I want you to write Rome out on a sheet of paper right now and take the RO, space it a little bit higher than the ME, and next to RO, I want you to write pH, put a space or a gap, and then put PCO2, okay? I want those two values next to RO. Near ME or metabolic equal, I want you to write pH, and then next to that, write HCO3. And remember, you gotta know those values of what is considered normal. Once you get that down, we're gonna go ahead and start. So if you need to pause me, do it. All right, we have our first question here. Let's take a look at what it says. You're asked to review a 63-year-old female who is admitted with shortness of breath. On arrival, your patient appears drowsy and is on 10 liters per minute via non-rebreather mask. You perform ABGs and let's take a look at the values. We have a pH of 7.29, PACO2 of 68.2, and HCO3 of 26. Now, take a look at your Rome chart, okay? Take a look at that Rome chart and let's go ahead and write in the values. pH is 7.29. We know that that is low, which means we're looking at an acidotic state. Now, if you're trying to figure out what kind of acidotic state, remember you have a 50-50 shot here. It's either metabolic or respiratory. Now, if we look at PACO2, 68.2, that's high. Remember this, if you have a opposite, meaning pH is opposite from PACO2, it's a respiratory problem. So we know this is an acidosis and it's a respiratory acidosis because they are opposite from each other, okay? 7.29 is a low value. 68.2 is a high value. And the HCO3 there is considered normal. Respiratory acidosis. Let's take a look at the second one. 17-year-old patient presents to the ER complaining of a tight feeling in their chest, shortness of breath, as well as some tingling in their fingers and around their mouth. They have no significant past medical history and are not on any regular medications. ABG is performed on the patient while they're breathing room air and the results are shown below. We got 7.49, which I'm already telling you is high, we got PACO2 of 24, which is low, right? And another normal finding in HCO3. So again, we have a respiratory opposite. We know that 7.49 is alkalotic because it's greater than 7.45. So we're looking at a respiratory alkalosis. Let's do another. We have a 48-year-old male who's been admitted with a 24-hour history of abdominal distension and profuse vomiting. 
CT scan reveals a large mass causing a bowel obstruction. As part of the patient's assessment, the surgical registrar re requests that you get a ABG with the results shown below. What do we got here? We got 7.5 on the pH. We know that that's high, which puts us into which category? Alkalosis. PaCO2, 41. It's considered normal. HCO3 is high. We have a metabolic equal. You see where we're going with this? They're both in the same direction. We have a high pH and we have a high HCO3, which makes this metabolic in nature. So we have metabolic alkalosis. Let's take a look at another. So you've been asked to review a 59-year-old female who's been admitted to the acute medical ward of your hospital. The nurse tells you that she appears short of breath despite currently receiving three liters oxygen via nasal cannula. You take an ABG, which reveals the following results. We got a pH here of 7.3, low. PaCO2 of 63, wow, really high. And an HCO3, also high. We have opposites. Okay, so we have a low pH, but we have a high value in our CO2. Now, we also have a high value in our HCO3 because we know that our patient's bicarbonate is rising. Remember what I talked about earlier? When you have too much carbonic acid, your kidneys start to kick on and start to create more bicarbonate. So this is a normal finding. But because we have opposites, we know it's respiratory in nature. 7.3 is considered acidosis. It's less than 7.35. So you already know respiratory acidosis. So last question here. We have an 89-year-old patient who presents with a fever, rigors, hypotension, and reduced urine output. They appear confused, unable to provide any meaningful history. Though the home that this patient came from has provided some basic documentation. You look through the information available and note that the district nurse changed the patient's catheter 24 hours ago. The medical registrar commences antibiotics, aggressive fluid resuscitation, and asks you to perform an ABG. Okay, so let's take a look at these values. We got 7.29, low. PaCO2, 41.2, normal. HCO3 of 15, low. We know that low pH and a low HCO3, they're equal, metabolic equal, so we know this is a metabolic. We know it's acidosis, why? Because it's 7.29, it's less than 7.35. We're looking at a metabolic acidosis. I really hope this resonates with you. This method right here will guarantee you a couple points on your national. I promise you these questions are very challenging for a lot of students because it's uh, intimidating. But if you memorize those values and you know how to use the Rome method effectively, you're going to have no problems. Hope this helps.